Good morning, church. Good morning. Hey, welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest United Methodist Church in the world. Woo! Hey, are you glad to be at church today? Are you happy to be at church today? Hey, are you ready to worship? Because this is the purpose for today. I'm so thankful that you are here today. By the way, my name is Watanak Hing. It is my honor and my privilege to be your pastor. Welcome as well, people online. I hope that you will enjoy the presence of God wherever you are today, throughout the service. And if you have any common prayer requests, please drop down in the comment box. We'll make sure we'll read it, and I will pray for you individually. Thank you for doing that. And friends, I'm so thankful that you are here today. You could have used this time to do a lot of other good stuff. But you decide to come to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. So today I pray that throughout the service that we have designed just for you, for today, through the prayer, the scripture reading, the liturgy that we have today, the sermon, the, the, the offering, the offertory that we will do today. I pray that every single part of the service, the Holy Communion, as you came in, you received the, the communion element all those part of the service i pray that it will serve the purpose for you to come today that you will leave this place knowing that wow i'm so happy that i decided to come to church i'm so happy that i have a chance to worship jesus christ i'm so happy because now i have been re-energized i have been recharged so i can go out and tackle the world amen, amen. hey friends are you ready to worship Please, please pay attention to all the details that we have in our church. The song that we sing, the lyrics, beautiful, rich, amazing. So, I invite you to really pay attention, to calm, to be calm, to keep breathing deeply and slowly as I invite the acolyte to come down. The acolyte is going to come down with the candles. It is the light of Christ. The light of Christ it's among us all. The Bible say, wherever there is a gathering of two or more people, they're the presence of God with us as well. And so as the acolyte come down, I invite you to really pay attention. Be very mindful of where you are right now. Be thankful for what God has done to you. Remember all the blessings that God has given to you. Humble your heart before God. Breathe deeply and slowly. Because God, because God has been so good to you. The acolytes are going to take their time. <laughs> and they are my children. I cannot blame them. Come on up, guys. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you for doing that. Yes. Yeah, they're going to grow up in our church, friends. Look at how many kids we have over there. Woo! Very soon, they will become doctors, dentists, lawyers, professors, teachers, nurses, and you name it, right? The future and the, 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 the pillars of our country. Wow, it's just amazing. More of them are coming in. Hey, give them a big round of applause. Yep, we'd love to have you here. Thank you so much. Now, friends, I would like to invite our liturgists to come up and lead us into a time of worship. I pray that it will, will, it will be so meaningful to you. Good morning, everybody. I remember to take off the mask this time, so I hope you can hear me better. <laughs> um, anyways, I am Tanaher, and I'm honored to be your liturgist for today. It's been a long week, and I've been really looking forward to just coming here and seeing everybody. For some reason, it's the way I start my week and the way I end my week. So I'm very uh, excited to see everybody here, and I hope we all remember to take a moment to just look across the room to see who's here. And so um, with that, uh, let's uh, get started. And now for our call to worship. If it had not been God who was, our, who was on our side, the troubles of our world would have swallowed us whole. If it had not been God who was on our side, the 
sorrows of our times would have swept us away. Are any among us suffering? Are any among us cheerful? Are any among us sick? Our help is in our God, the one who made heaven and earth. Call upon God, creator and rescuer. God is on our side. Now for the Lord's Prayer, starting with the Hmong language. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And today's scripture is in Mark 9, 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able to soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where, where their warm, the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. And now for our children's moment. As the children are coming down, can you please give them a big round of applause? You know, it takes a lot for the parents to prepare the kids to come down. I would like to share my sympathy with my wife who will have to prepare the three boys to come. And you know, with uh, Li Chai and Mary, they have five children. With uh, Yin Yang and Eddie, they have seven kids. I mean, it takes a lot for them to bring their kids home. You know what I'm saying? If they can come to church with seven kids, you have no excuse to not come to church, don't you think? All right, friends, without further ado, big round of applause for our children. Hi, good morning, children of God. How are we all doing today? Thumbs up, we're doing good. Side with thumbs, we're still not sure yet. Thumbs down, it's just not that day. Looks like everybody's thumbs up. That's awesome. It's so good for you all to be here, to see all of you in the house of the Lord together. That's so amazing. So have you guys listened to that scripture that was just read? Yeah, what was the mineral that they were talking about? The mineral. Philo, do you know what the scripture was about? Oh, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> 
So salt is very useful. We use it every day. Imagine eating some french fries without any salt. Would that taste any good? No, I don't think so. Yeah, salt helps to bring out the best flavors in all the food. We use it every day, actually. It's very important. Like, um, salt is used to set dyes in very um, colorful dyes without it. This one looks so bright, right? This color yellow, it'd look really boring and dull. And it's used to, um, you know, help like with leathers, like his belt and stuff. Fila's pretty familiar with this, right? No? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and also, it helps use to make... Oh, it broke apart. I'm sorry. They'll make like this cute little structure, but you guys all know what this is, right? It's Legos or building bricks. It's helped to use to make plastic. And um, so we all know the usefulness of the salt. So a grain of salt is very important. It's very small, but it's very, very important. And very valuable. Like people used to use salt as a form of money because it helps our bodies need salt in our system. We use salt for a lot of things, food, making stuff. So when Jesus, he knew the power of the salt and he used it to tell his followers how he wants to live. And he said, salt is good, but if you lose its saltiness, how do you make it salty again? Do you guys have an idea? No? We have to be the salt in ourselves. We have to be peace, at peace with ourselves and peace with each other. So when he says you want to be salt for the world, that means we have to spread the love of Christ, right? We have to show us being Jesus-like through our actions, right? That means like being kind to everyone as much as we can, right, Fila? Right. Yes, through our actions. And there's a saying, when possible, use words, if you have to, but through our actions. So we want to do and we want to remember to, um, like I mentioned last Sunday, as being like the goat of Christians. So to keep our relationship with Jesus going, right? So that means through prayer, we can read the Bible. But most of all, we want to be the salt to the world. So there's the world that hasn't been seasoned with salt yet. We want to be that. We want to be that salt for them. Okay? Because Jesus calls us to do that. So, so we need to add flavor. All right. Can we all bow our heads in prayer and please repeat? God, help us trust in all and all you for things, I apologize. Help us to be salty Christians. Help us to be salty Christians. So we can flavor our world with your love. So we can flavor our world with your love. Help us to make the world a better place. Help us to make the world a better place. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go out and be salt to the world. All right, friends, without further ado, let me start with a story of this group of, of, of smart people. They always come to a, a, a breakfast together to, to just talk about how smart they are and what they can do to change the world. These people have very high IQ, you know, and they have this you know, group together and they come and meet. And then one time they were in that restaurant and then they, they discover that the salt is in a wrong salt shaker. It, salt is in the pepper shaker, and the pepper is in salt shaker. 
And they came up with a common idea. They were like, oh, that's good. Let's solve this problem. How can we do that, right? So they took all the paper. They become very methodical, like the Methodists, you know. They tried to plan out what to do, right? And so after they got out what they want to do, they called the waiter here and they say, lady, I don't know who did this, but salt is in the pepper shaker and pepper is in the salt shaker. But we made your job a little easier, so we decided to make a plan. And this is the plan. We need you to bring us a napkin, a tablespoon, and two sauce bowls, you know, so that we can transfer it properly, effectively, and efficiently. And the lady said, oh yeah? She reached out to the salt, uh, salt shaker and uncap it, and the pepper shaker and unscrew it, and switch it, and put it back in, and she said, now what can I serve you with a drink? Sometimes you become very complicated, right? Very methodical and thinking about all these steps, but the problem is you just switch the cap. That's about it. Today's story, we are hearing about the story of the salt. At the end of the scripture, Jesus is saying, you go out to be the salt, the salt that is salty that's going to go and change the world. Jesus is trying to empower you, give you that spirit of going out and make the world saltier, a better place every time, one person at a time. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Close your eyes, breathe deeply and slowly, relax, think about how good our God is to us. Think about your minister and me. Maybe you can reach, reach your hand out to him and, 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 and pray for me as I'm trying to un, unsolve this problem or trying to, to, to bring out messages from this scripture to you all. Pray that God will speak to each and every one of us, that he will nudge us, he will make us a better person and bring us out, take us out to the world and be, and be the salt and the light that he wants us to be. And white people online as well, to really, wherever you are, on your couch, in your living room, or on your desk, just sit comfortably and pray to God wherever you are. Pray for your family, pray, your, your, pray for your faith community, pray for your loved ones and your friends, pray for your pastor as well. And Lord, may the word on my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, do you, do you love Jesus? How many of you love Jesus? Raise your hand if you love Jesus. Raise your hand if Jesus has done great things in your life. Raise your hand if Jesus has always transformed your life and been with you so far. And thank you so much for raising your hand. By the grace of God, we are here today. Now you can blow just your hand now. Thank you. Yeah, you cannot outbeat our children. They will raise their hand. They are willing to be a part of it. Because, because we know, you know, when we think about Jesus every time, every time, no matter what is going on in your life, when Jesus happened your mind, you are empowered, don't you think? You are energized. You are recharged. Because Christ has always given you that, has always given you that message. The message of going out and be that salt, be that light to the world. Because many times, friends, when we don't have Christ in our life, it's like stew without salt. It's like, bah, right? Can you say bah, right? Like, like, like you go to a restaurant that they, they forget something in it. There's not enough salt and the soup, it just does not taste as good. But with Christ in our life, our life is much better. And today, I pray that the message will help you out, right? It started with that verse 38, when, when John came to Jesus. Okay, let, let me remind you a little bit here. Last week, we talked about how the disciples came to Jesus and they were arguing about which one of them would be the greatest, right? And Jesus gave them a time out. Come on out, man. Nah, you, you got something messed up here. And then Jesus told them about the story of the Passion, that the Son of Man will be betrayed, will be tortured, and will be killed, right? And then Jesus come out and say, look, if you want to be the greatest, you, wanna be, you, you need to be like one of these, the children, right? 
these people, you have to be so low, you have to be so humble so that you can be the greatest. Now John and the disciples came and sealed with Jesus, and there was, they were finding something different, right? The thing is, the other people that don't even belong to their group, they prayed in Jesus' name, and then they do miracles. But John is saying, look, we saw someone drive out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. How many times as Christians do we do that, friends? Oh, they are this, they are that. Look at the Baptist, look at the Catholic. Only the Methodist is the best, the rest is not so good. Look at the non-denominational church, look at the Assembly of God church, look at the Pentecostal church, they all do it wrong. Only the Methodists do everything right, don't you agree? Sometimes you have that mindset of like, oh, only God can do good things in my church, and we try to put everybody down, everybody else down. Sometimes we even go to a little further, right? We only prioritize our political ideas. Only you belong to this party that is good because the other party is not as good, right? You have to be this ethnic group to be good because the other ethnic group is not as good, right? We come up with all this criticism. And Jesus is saying, stop that, stop that. I'm not just only for you alone. Anybody who speak in my name, in Jesus' name, they will be one of us. Because Jesus' name is powerful, because Jesus' name is the name that saves. It's Jesus' name that transforms us. It is in Jesus' name that makes us alive and living and kicking and go and change the world. Because whenever we think about Jesus' name, let me tell you again, your life is better. You have that power from the inside. You go out and tackle the world. You bring hope and encouragement to the world because of Jesus' name. You experience it, that God's grace has been, has been playing a big part in your life, and you want to share that grace to others. And those grace can happen. Those experiences can happen through Jesus' name. It is in Jesus' name that our life will be better. And now I remember the song that we love to sing. Lord, I lift your name on high. Remember that song, friends? It's when we are talking about Jesus' name, okay? Let's sing this song as a little, in a little faster upbeat, okay? In, a, in an upbeat way of sing, singing, okay? I hope that this song will help us remember what it means when we have Jesus, when we remember Jesus' name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let's sing with me. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my and from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Don't you like that song? Lord, I lift your name on high because when your name is among us all, we bring hope to the hopeless. We bring, we bring healing to, to the brokenhearted. We bring encouragement to those who are despaired, who need encouragement. Don't you believe that the world needs a, a lot of encouragement? The world needs the name of Jesus. Because when the name of Jesus, wherever it is, the darkness will become brighter. The name of Jesus is like the candle to bright up the situation. We are here, we worship God, and we pray to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I remember, you know, whenever I participate with the, the WWD ministry that we have in our church, the widows, the, widow, the widowers, and the divorcees, when they come together in the beginning, what do they do? They hold hands and they say that, that, that mantra, this is the, the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. 
It's their mission, right? You come and you hold hand and you say that encouragement uh, uh, mantra to one another saying, look, no matter what has gone in our life, what has going through in our life, but God will make our day brighter. And we as the community of faith will sit down together and share our feeling, our thought to one another. And then we will finish with the most famous game in the world called Fargo's, right? And I love to play that game. Except yesterday, I could not play. I had to be in the, the, the animal prayer service. Because I win all the time. That's what they say. <laughs> they don't want it when I roll the dice and it become one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's a 1,500 point right there. But anyway, that's amazing, right? But then, look at verse 42. If anyone caused one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble. That's a big word, right? Jesus is talking about, look, friends, this is our mission, to be salt and light to the world. And so let us encourage one another. Let us go out and make the world a better place. Don't stumble one another. That is not good. Let us, not, let us stop criticizing others. Let us try to build ourselves up, become more and more salty for, for the world. Because the world needs all of us to work together to make this world a little more tastier, to preserve this world, to be, to be better, to be longer, to live, to live more complete lives. Don't stumble one another, right? I remember when I one time was running. You know, I love, I do still love running a lot. And then I remember that one time when I was running, in the beginning I started, I feel a little, a little pebble in my, in my shoe. You know, a little small one in my shoe, and it was touching my little toe. And, and you know, I was supposed to take my shoe off and shake that little pebble out, right? But you know, I already started. Who cares about that little pebble? That, that, that's, that will be okay, right? I, I will be fine. And then I start running. And as I was starting running, you know, a mile later, I started to feel that pebble growing. Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, it was literally growing in my shoe. Have you ever experienced that? It's like, oh my, my, it's so big and it's hurt so much, right? And so I had to stop and shake it out. I don't want to see it. It's like a speck or something, you know? But the, when I was thinking about the stumbling block, it's something that is inside us. Like we don't really care, but we thought, ah, it's going to be okay. That's not going to bother me. But friends, if you have any stumbling block in your life, let's well, take it out. Don't let it grow. Because it will stop you. It will hinder you from getting to your destination. You might think it's big, but it's somehow growing there. It's getting harder and harder, more and more irritated. And you won't be able to finish on time. Or to get to your goal, to your destination. Right? And Jesus is saying, look, if any of you become the stumbling block, it's bad. Right? Jesus even used the word, cut off your hand. You know, put the millstone, look at the millstone there. Put, tie the millstone around your neck and drop you in the sea. I mean, this is a very, very difficult uh, graphic language. Remember, there was a kid in there, right, in the group. And Jesus didn't even worry about his language, you know. I mean, that language is very, very graphic. You know, put the millstone around your neck and drop you in the sea. If your hand caused you to, caused you to, to sin, cut it off. Your leg, cut it off. Your eye, take it out. Is, is, is Jesus telling you this literally? No, no, no. If you were the first century Jews, you would know that the rabbi loves to use hyperbole. The exaggeration, right? The word that it means, that, 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 that sounds so big, so high, so, so strong. But it, it, it wants to drive out a message for you to understand. Take Jesus seriously, friend. Don't take Jesus literally. This is hyperbole. What is Jesus trying to say? Anything that is your stumbling block, take it out. Maybe sometimes it is your arrogance, you know. Yeah, you, you can do everything. You can do it yourself, you know. Sometimes it is your greed. Oh, I want more and more and more. Sometimes it's the materialism, you know. It's like, oh, you want this, you want that. You want to catch up with the world. You want to be, you know, you want to be top notch, you know. And so, sometimes it's your laziness. You just don't want to do it. It's just, you know, it's your procrastination. 
You know, I, I know that when I was students, I love to procrastinate. I love to finish the assignment in the middle of the night, you know. When, when, when the assignment time is like the cutting off is, is mid, at 12 midnight, I finish exactly at 12 midnight and send it out right there. Procrastination. Right? You, you know that, right, all the children, all the youth, all the high school kids. You do that all the time. When you go to college, you like to, do, to, to pull all-nighters, you know. You, you do the Taco Run, the Taco Bell Run. You go get Baja Blast, you know, like a big gulp of Baja Blast. You just chuck it and, you know, keep you awake all night long, right? You drink Monster. You drink energy drink, right? That, that's that's not, not so good. The stump, what, what are the stumbling blocks that you should take it out? You know, sometimes drugs, sometimes friends. Some friends are you just, just your stumbling block. You know, what, what do they say? Show me who your friends are, and I'll tell you what you will become. Right? And that, that also very applicable to all, to all our, our youth as well. You know, as you are going to school, you, as you are making friends, who are your friends around you? Are they encouraging you? Are they challenging you? Are they your good friends? So you spend more time with them? Those are very, very big decisions that you have to make. Right? Verse 49, verse 47 it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. I know this is a very difficult language again, right? The kingdom of God where you experience the love and the grace and the forgiveness of God. And then hell, a place where you are separated from the love of God. And Jesus is saying, look friends, following Jesus is not easy it's not happy but it is holy you should not feel like oh you want to be happy all the time but you should want to be holy you want you want to be better all the time jesus is saying you know it's better for you to enter the kingdom of god even with one eye in other words it might be hard it takes a lot of discipline to go into the kingdom of god do that because it's only good for you I, I visit a friend, uh, our church member, and, 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 and our church member used to tell her, her son that what good is it when you are taking drugs? It does not give you any good result. Why are you doing that? Yes, it takes a lot of discipline to cut it out, to stop it, to get away from it, to determine, a lot of determination. And eventually the person, the son, stopped doing it. And it's good for him. You know, it, it takes a lot of determination. It's hard. It's hard. But it's better to enter the kingdom of God that way. When you're talking about hell, you're like, you really, you really think, believes that there is hell, pastor? I do believe there is hell. And if you don't believe there is hell, let me, let me show you this little picture. This is hell. This is in Cambodia. A garbage dump. You know, I used to work over there with missionaries to go to the garbage dump, to work with all these children and parents who will have to, to, to walk behind or follow those garbage trucks to collect recycles. Their life is so difficult, so hard. Hell here is, uh, uh, the original word is Gehenna. Gehenna is actually, literally, the garbage dump where, where, where the, the trash is being burned. Basically, it's being decomposed, right? The compost pile, it's, it's hot. It's burning all the time. It's, it, you see the smoke coming out all the time. Sometimes they call it a smoky mountain. And, and a lot of other uh, countries also have that kind of spot of, of, of place too. It's held there. In, 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 seven, in 1975 to 1979, Cambodia was going through hell. The killing field. More than 3 million people were killed. While the world is going on, you are celebrating life. Cambodian people are being slaughtered every day back then. This is, this is the, the modern hell that is going on. You think about, you think about the, the 1994. This is 1994 in Rwanda. The genocide in Rwanda. Remember that time? We are still having a great time going to school, working, you know, preaching, enjoying life. People in Rwanda are being uh, genocide, being slaughtered. Oh, you, and you name it, you know. And even think right now, the southern border, 
I'm not political here. I'm not being political. I'm just talking about those who are struggling right now. Hundreds and thousands of people living in the border. Right? I'm not talking about political, okay? You can be in any political party you want. But what I'm saying, the condition of those people who are living in the border right now. There's no home. There's no income. They don't know where they will be. They might be deported. They might be kicked by the horse. I don't know. Right? They might have to swim across the river with crocodiles. They might have to jump the fence. They might have to be dropped off. It's just all bad. And we are, oh, yeah, singing kumbaya in our church, right? Having fun. Hell really exists, friends. What are we doing? Verse 50, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourself and be at peace with one another. Have salt among yourself and be at peace with one another. We know that salt was a big commodity then, right? It was very expensive. It was very, very valuable. Salt made food tastier, right? We know that. Without salt, food don't taste good. Salt also helped preserve food. Are you the one who will preserve the kingdom of God, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are you the witness to the world? I remember one time when I was a cheerleader in Bethel College, Indiana, right? I was a cheerleader, and in, in the beginning of the basketball game, the cheerleader is standing under the hoop to wait to collect the ball and throw it back into the court so the, so the player can practice, right? And then one time I saw this ball boom and run out of the court. I ran, ran out to uh, chase after the ball, and I dripped the ball back. You know, I was dripping the ball back into the court, ready to toss it to the player. But the coach from behind me, he said, what not? Shoot it. And I just got that, right? I became arrogant. I dribbling in like I was a pro player. I look at the line, the three-point line, and I stood, and I jump, and I shoot, and nothing but net. <laughs> Three points! It was all luck, friend, no skills. <laughs> but what I want to say is, the coach saw it. The coach saw it, and it was like, wow, come to the audition. I don't know, no, no, coach, it was all luck, it was all luck. My point is, I need the witness. How good would that should be if nobody saw it, right? And we as the Christian who experienced the grace of God, the name of Jesus Christ that has changed you, give you that transformation like life, the transformed life, you need to witness to the world. The world need to hear that Jesus is alive, Christ is alive, the grace of God is still working in this world, amen? amen. That's what we should do, the salt. The salt, the salty Christian. Let me finish with this. A friend of mine called me the other day. He's from Cambodia. He's now having a great job, a great family with children, a home to live in a beautiful city. And then he said, there's something missing. I don't know what's going on. I think I have it complete, but there's something missing. My family is still in Cambodia. All my friends are still in Cambodia. I don't have friends here. There is something missing, friends. I would like to tell you that there's a lot of people like that around your life. You all call to go out and be the salty Christian so that nobody can feel alone. Nobody can feel unloved. Nobody can feel left out because you will help and join. You will help and make this world better. Yesterday, we had this wonderful celebration at, 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 at Jolie's uh, mom's uh, uh, birthday. 86 years old, Sang Lee was there and his brothers were there. We had a beautiful celebration. They slaughter a cow and they cook every part of the cow, you know, from the head to the tail, from the outside to the inside, and they make great food. And the chili tastes so hot. My wife tastes that food and she was like, why is everything so hot? And I like it. You know, that's how we do it. You know, and we just have great time. I observe all the kids are just hanging around themselves and having fun. They cheer up one another. All the adults are talking to one another. They make friends and they encourage one another. And that's how we do it. At the same time, while this is going on, we also have this wonderful party as well. You know, at our church, we bring our animals, we appreciate their love, their patience, their participation in our lives. We pray for the animals, we bring other friends to join us. 
other friends come and, and bring their, their, their dogs, their, their animals to be blessed. And I pray that you will continue to do that, friends. As a family of faith, we will continue to be salty. We will continue to preserve the world. We will continue to make the world taste a lot better every day. Amen? Amen. Now I invite you to join with me, friends, in a time of prayer. Just close your eyes and contemplate. What has God called you to do, to be, and to change? What part of your life that are like stumbling blocks for you that you need to take out? Think about that. Who, who, who around you that are living in darkness that you need to be light to them? Who around you that lives are not as salty? Life is like stew that is missing salt. That you need to be salt for that friends, for that, that people. Who around you are broken hearted right now and need encouragement? Who around you that needs some smile? That you want to just be listening ears and, and just listen and talk to? Who around you that, that need to hear the name of God? Who around you that need to be invited to be connected to the family of faith? When you have those pictures in mind, I ask that you will pray to God, that God will give you that inspiration, that energy, so you can be salt to the world. Lord Jesus, help us Help each and every one of us here, Lord, that we want to grow and we want to be the salty salt for you, the salt that has some taste that will go out and transform the world to become a better place each and every day. We recognize that there are problems all around the world and we will follow your guidance. We will, we will be obedient to whatever you have called us to do, to be and to change and to become. Help us, Lord, to be your witness, the witness of your love, the witness of your name to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, when you come in, you are given uh, the, the communion element. You're also given the napkin as well. Make sure you have the napkin underneath so it don't spill on your clothes. The top part of the, the, the element is the wafer. I know some of you even complain that it does not taste as great. If you want to eliminate that, maybe you want to chuck the, 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 the wafer and the juice at the same time if you want to. It makes it taste a little better. But I think the most important part is, is to understand the sacrificial love that Christ has given to you. All right? It's not about the taste of the food. But it's about the body of Christ that's been broken for you. And the blood of Christ that's been shed for you. When Jesus brought his disciples to come together in a time of Holy Communion, Jesus took the bread and broke it. The bread, and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. And after the dinner, Jesus took the wine, the cup of the juice, the wine. Now we have the grape juice there. And he's giving thanks to God. He gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this cup. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you can in the remembrance of me. Friends, when you partake the communion element, I pray that God's love remains in you. His sacrificial love will shine through you to others as well. Lord, thank you so much for your love. Help us to remember you, Lord. Help us to walk by you all the time. Amen. The, the, the musician, the, the uh, worship committee group will be singing a song here. I pray that you will take this time to contemplate and to think about how God loves you so much. You, you want to come down to the, uh, the prayer rail? You can do that too. Take this time to pray to God. If you want, you can also go to the candle lighting, candle station back there. 
You light the candle of Christ so that the candle of Christ, the light of Christ, can shine wherever there is darkness. Maybe you want to mention the darkness in that place as well. What is it and that, that you want Christ to shine through? Let's do that. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have in you. And kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who serves as a slave to them. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have in you. Neighbors are rich and they're poor, neighbors are black and they're white, neighbors are near and they're far away. Jesus, with your love show us how to serve the neighbors we have in you these are the ones we should serve these are the ones we should love these are the neighbors of us and you Jesus, Jesus show us with your love Show us how to serve the neighbors we have in you. I would like to say thank you for your love and your support and your donation to our church. Please continue to support our ministry as we are working together so hard to bring light to the world. You can continue to give through your uh, traditional form of giving, writing a check, send it to our church, we'll make sure the check is well spent, the, the, fun, the finance is well, well prepared and well organized. You can also give through our online as well. You can um, look at the, the barcode here, aim your camera phone, your phone camera on it, and then it will lead you into the online way of giving through PayPal. Thank you so much. And people online, I ask that you will continue to pray for our church and to support our church this way as well. Please join with me in a time of prayer or dedication. You can find it in the bulletin or you can read it on the screen. Giving God, we can never match your generosity. When we are in need, you are at our side. Present to us even in our darkness moments. You rescue us from harm. Make us into a people who celebrate your goodness. Drawing others into the celebration of your many blessings. Receive our offerings, even if they are as small as a drink of someone who thirsts. Transform them into the ministry of your reign, here and now on earth. In the name of Jesus, your greater gift. Amen. Let's stand for doxology, friends, if you can't be able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Closing song by Nancy and Darren, number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. Hey, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. When you leave this place, friend, please remember to be the great witness of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God is ready to empower you. Just remember his name. Your life will be transformed and others will be transformed as well. Please remember the message today that you will leave this place to become the flavorful salt so the world will be so flavorful as well. Amen? Amen. Hey, may the Spirit of God be with you wherever you are and His love continue to shine through you to others. And this will conclude our service today. Thank you for coming. I hope to see you next week. Thank you people online as well. God is good. All and all the time. God is good. And I will see you next week, friend. God bless you.